Hi there. In this video, we'll learn about how to process I.O. using the diamond operator in Perl. Diamond operator is a very interesting feature that Perl has that lets you implement filters in just few lines of code. You could mimic various Unix commands or Linux command line tools, filters in just few lines of code in Perl and you don't have them. Before I get dive into diamond operator, let me give a quick recap about how you can read files and process files using the angular bracket operator. When you use them in blank, it's a diamond operator. I'll tell you about that now. So let's say that I want to read a file and process line by line. How do you do it? Well, one of the ways I just have a readily used example in here, which I'm going to show you and explain. It's a few lines of code. And by the way, I'm not using use warnings, use strict. So yeah, you might want to use that if you really need a safety net. And there are a couple of things which I'm doing as an old time Perl guy. So yes, a couple of you might differ in the coding convention that I'm following in here, but don't worry about that. So yeah, so I said my dollar file name is equal to shift at ARGB. This will basically take an argument from the command line. If you don't pass a command line argument, it's just going to die with a message usage dollar zero file name. Let me just test this right here. If I just try to say dot slash read file dot pl, I made this executable anyways. Uh, you know, I can just say read file dot pl on my Linux system. You can see it's already having execute permissions. So I did a ch mode plus x. You can do a ch mode plus x read file dot pl if you want to enable execute permissions, which I already have done. So in such case, you can just directly say dot slash read file dot pl and then say uh, without any arguments, it gives you this error. This basically Perl syntax. Basically, it expects some argument to be passed. If you don't pass an argument, basically this evaluates to false. Therefore, it bails out with an error, right? It's a very nice pragmatic idiom that I used. No if condition, no unless and all that. Just short circuit operators, right? And um, assuming that I pass a command line argument, I have a file called a.txt on my, uh, in my Linux system in the current directory. And... If I just pass that as an argument, it's supposed to read that file contents and print it. How does it actually work? Well, this dollar file name will represent the first argument that I passed, which is a.txt in this case. Now, I'm opening the file by using the open function in Perl. The Perl open function has variations in syntax. Where the basic syntax, you can so open file handle. By the way, I'm using a bare word. Some of you might suggest using a scalar variable. It's up to you. I'm an old time Perl person. I will use the bare word. Bare words are best used for file handles, socket handles, and things that represent external resources. So you don't get to assign to them accidentally. You cannot assign to a bare word, right? So you can just say open txt file. It's a bare word. Dollar file name. If you don't pass a mode to open, the file is going to be open for reading. If it fails to open the file because the file is not found, or if you don't have permissions to read from the file, as usual, it will bail out with an error. So if I try giving some argument like say b.txt, which I don't have permissions to read as a normal user. No, I don't have the file in the directory. It's a reason. So you can just see fails with fails an error. And you can also see how I'm printing the error message by using $0, which is who's complaining, the program name, colon, what caused the problem, failed to open dollar file name. It says failed to open b.txt. And why did it fail to open? I'm just using the OS error. I don't invent the message. I don't invent the error message. This is the kind of message that you get when you try to use your Unix tools to open a file that's non-existent, right? You can see cat p.txt, no such file or directory. It's always good practice that when you're building command line applications, no matter which language you use, try to be consistent with existing tools as much as possible, as much as you can, so that people who use your tool, use your use your utility will find it convenient to use pretty much like they could use other Unix tools, right? That's a common convention that you follow for printing error messages. Anyways, now that the file could be opened to read a file, this is the operator that we use. Traditionally, you could actually say this, you could say my dollar line equals angular bracket text file. And I can say my print dollar line like this, and it should work. Right? I mean, try to give a file that's existent like a.txt. This works. This time, when you use an angular bracket with a file handle passed as an argument, uh, it reads one line, assuming the left hand side is a scalar variable. The left hand side is scalar, it just reads one line at a time, and the line is being printed. In fact, 
in a while loop, if you don't pass the left-hand side variable in this case, you'll anyway try to evaluate this angular bracket in scalar context by storing the result in a special variable called dollar underscore. You can print dollar underscore if you want to. This is a default scalar variable, which will host the resultant of that expression by using the while loop and it works. But actually, it is a print and don't pass any argument. Print by default prints the default scalar variable. So you could actually use it this way. Um, some of you might now look at this code and say, can we not make it a one liner? Can we not simplify this? Yes, you can. You can um, rather rather than having code, which has got three lines, you know, you have a compound statement with the body, which is made up of a single statement. You could actually simplify it by using another form of this. Let's say print while next one. One liner. And this works. Some of you might ask, if it's a small file, can we not read the entire file at one go? Yes. If the file is small, instead of reading it line by line and processing them, you could also do it another way. You could actually use a technique where you could say, my at contents is equal to angular bracket text file. Now the entire file contents is read into this array called contents. Basically, when you use the angular bracket to read a file handle, the left hand side is a scalar, it reads one line at a time. But if the left hand side is an array, it reads the entire contents of the file into this array. There is also a concept called slope mode, which I'll discuss for another video. But for now, my focus will be on the diamond operator. The diamond operator starts off with this angular bracket but without any file handle. I'm going to show you what it does, right? But now if I just try to say print at contents, you can see this. Let me complete this code as it is. You know, this is so redundant. You could actually use simply print angular bracket text file. Print function expects a list of arguments, list of arguments. But then when you pass an angular bracket with text file, this is evaluated in list context. Therefore, it reads the entire file contents, returns in place and print happily prints it. So it's a one liner again, without one more, one more key while, but this will work for files that are small. I would not recommend using this if the file is very big. If you're trying to use a 10 gigabyte file, like a movie image or so on, I wouldn't recommend using this. You know, one of the things jokes I take about Perl is that Perl rarely crashes. Your operating system might crash before the script would. Okay, just be aware of that. So you can see this. By the way, um, what if I use blank angular bracket? I'm going to show you that. This is where the old topic of discussion was. I'm going to try a simple example here where I can just say, mm, let's call this as, you know, I say d.pl, just make it very short and simple, okay? d.pl. And as usual, I'm going to use a script boilerplate in the beginning. And uh, all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to say, while blank angular bracket, I'm using less than, greater than, with nothing inside it. And I'm just going to print it. Uh, read from somewhere, read from somewhere and print it. That What's that somewhere all about? Let's try this. Let's try so make this executable. I said dot slash d dot pl and pass a file name a dot txt. It works. You see it works. It's able to read from the file and print it. I didn't have to really open a file, right? But what if I don't pass an argument? You can see that it reads from standard input. If at all I type in something, it echoes it back. Like you see here. This is my own variant of cat command. I'm going to show you how it works. Let's say I have multiple files here. So um, I'm just, just going to create another file. Let's say cat greater than b.txt. I say this is b.txt. This is another line in b.txt. This is yet another line in b.txt. Yeah, it's boring. So I'm just going to stop this. I'm going to create another file. I'll just call this c.txt this time another file and in which I'm just I'm going to type this is c.txt this is another boring line in c.txt I'm going to close this 
Normally in Unix environments, including Linux, you could use cat command like this. You can say cat b.txt, c.txt. You get a concatenation of these two files. That's the real use of cat command. Concatenate multiple arguments passed as file names or IO streams, right? But um, what about our program? We just say dot slash d.pl and say b.txt, c.txt. Interesting, right? In fact, you can implement filters perfectly with this, which means if at all you want to read from a file, if you just want to process files line by line and it's a text file, you wouldn't want to bother opening a file with the open function, has a file handle and use file, file handle and all that. You can just get away with just the blank angular bracket and you get a bonus as this working as a filter. I'm going to show you something else now. Maybe I don't want to just print these lines. Maybe I want to convert this to uppercase and print. How do I do that? I guess, you know, in Perl, we have these uh, special backslash escape sequences. One of them is backslash capital U, which will convert the rest of the string to uppercase. So I'm just going to say, what do I want to convert uppercase? The default scalar variable. So I'm just going to fix it this way. And now, run this. Yes. It not just reads multiple files, but it also prints an uppercase. How else can I use it? If I say d.pl without any arguments, each line is converted to uppercase and printed back. How else, how else can I use this? Well, I could say ls minus l shows me contents of a directory. This is just a Unix command, right? I want to convert the output of this command to all uppercase. You want to do that? Pipe d.pl. So here we are. We wrote our own filter. But maybe you want to do something else. You want to not just convert uppercase. Maybe you want to print the line numbers. You know, we know this command called cat minus n. If you're not aware in Unix, if at all I say ls, let's say ls pipe cat minus n. See ls pipe cat is just going to show you line wise. But when you put a cat minus n, it's going to number every line as a filter. Can we do this in Perl? Yes. All you could do is just put a backslash t tab, okay? And dollar dot, I can say colon, colon let's go. You can change the format the way you want. I'm just choosing to use this format. Here it is. Every line is prefixed with a line number. So the possibilities are innumerous. If you know how to process every line, of course, you can hear and transform them the way you want. You can just put them in blank angular bracket and this works just like a natural filter, a Unix filter, right? And this is what this diamond operator, the blank angular bracket will do for you. It lets you process input stream, which could be standard input and can have multiple arguments passed as a file if you want to. You can process each file one at a time and give you the result. So that's the benefit that you get here. So implementing a filter in Perl is just as simple as this. Bonus point, you don't have to write a script. Perl has one-liners. And this is where I really like Perl about the power of Perl is in the one-liners. So you can cram in a lot of interesting idioms in just one line, and it just looks and works like magic. You want to show off to others how good you are, you are at Perl? Show this. Maybe somebody tells you, I want to convert the output of a command to uppercase. Let's say PSAX. I want to convert the output to uppercase. All you do is just a PSAX pipe Perl minus E. I'll tell you what. Perl minus NE. The minus N switch is going to put that while blank angular bracket loop. And within that loop, all I want to do is just print. But now I'm just going to print dollar. Okay. Backslash U dollar underscore here we go here we go we converted the output to uppercase this minus n switch is like adding a while blank angular bracket curly braces and whatever you put with the minus e switch is evaluate that in the loop evaluate the print in the loop right so this is how it works so there are many other options that we can try but you can use it in one line if you want to, if you want to just let's say number each line and you don't have cat command at your disposal or maybe you're not running on linux uh, you might be running on a mac os or you might be running on even on windows where you have perl installed but you don't have commands like cat so what do you do you can just say 
PSX, Pipe, Pearl, or I'll turn LS command. I'll say LS and uh, maybe I'll try to say LS slash EDC. Right? I'll say Pipe, Pearl, minus NE. And I would just say dollar dot, colon, dollar and scope. Print dollar dot and dollar underscore. Oh, something failed. Okay, you need to put this in quotes. That's the reason why it's failing. Quoting might be required. It's, it's important, right? You can see every line with a line number. So this is how you could use Perl as a filter to replace various other tools, right? So what I like about this, uh, what I like about Perl language is that uh, when I work on, sometimes I have the misfortune to work on Windows. Why I say misfortune? Because the Windows command line is definitely not automatable. Things are changing right now with Windows subsystem for subsystem for Linux. Uh, sometimes I use Ming W64, I use Sigwin, I use all these tools to give a Unix-like environment, but sometimes I'm stuck at the Windows command prompt and it looks very crippled. I might want to use grep command, I want to use cat command, I want to use hit command, I want to use tail command. Now they exist. And luckily, if I just have Perl installed, I'm, I'm at home. I can substitute all those commands by using the Perl one-liners if you uh, to do this. In fact, you want to implement head. So head-like function, you want to print the first few lines of, uh, you know, the output of any command. Let's say when I run, uh, when I run ls slash etc pipe cat, it shows a lot of contents. Or maybe if you have PSX, a lot of contents. But I want to just print the first few lines of output. You could just say PSAX pipe Perl minus NE. And you could uh, just say, um, print if dollar dot is less than five maybe the first five lines actually you could say it's actually equal to greater than five. right so you can less than equal to sorry less than equal to five so you can use this kind of idioms to supplant commands missing on your environment but more focus is this is using the angular bracket to implement a filter so in your Perl script but to remind, if you want to do it in a script, you know how to do that. And this code here. I hope you found this video useful. It's a small concept. I have to just tell you the use of the diamond operator. So hope to meet you in future videos covering more concepts similar to this. Thank you very much. Hope to meet you in future videos.